Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ray Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Legends of the Dead. So I don't know about you guys, but I really like the, the new table here. Just gonna scroll around and show it to you guys. The skull looks pretty cool. Yeah, I like the, the new table graphic. So in today's episode, we're gonna be declaring war on this little tiny country. Trying to expand our lands a bit more at the expense of a weak power. But before we do that, there's a few things we need to do. We can now put our son as the task collector. So might as well do that just so we get rid of this notification here. We do need to find a spouse for our younger son. And we're just gonna have it limited by a 10 year age difference. And we're gonna try and see if we can't find any inheritable traits. That does mean we'd have to marry him off to a lowborn character though. Because there's only two characters or three in here that aren't lowborn. And they're not really the, the best options. So let me just sort this by some of all skills. And you can see all these top options are lowborn characters. She's got two traits. Including the fertility one. Both of these are quick. As far as overall traits, she's slightly higher than her. But she's much, much better. She's very impressive, actually. In fact, almost like somebody we should arrange marriage for ourselves. We don't have to piss off our current spouse, though. So maybe we'll wait to do that. But we'll leave her available and just marry Delbar to our son. She's got the quick trait. Maybe they'll uh, have some children with it. So let's go ahead and declare war on this character to conquer his county. Gonna cost 104 prestige. He does have about one ally. But even together, their troops should not be able to match our own. Go and start this conflict up. There's one thing I did forget to do, and that is an interaction here that we can do for our clan. So you can accuse any member of your house of decadence, which is if you're trying to move house unity uh, away from Harmonious. Also, it causes stress for that character. They get this negative trait here. It does have a few positive bonuses, but overall it is negative. And then you get a lower opinion with the character, or you can do the opposite and instead increase their opinion and give them a largely positive modifier, though it does have a penalty to enemy hostile scheme success chance. I think that's because, you know, you're making them more public. They, you know, you've talked good about them, and so people are more likely to act against them. You're making them more prestigious. Uh, but it does give them some nice bonuses to Heidi, House Opinion. They like you better, and we'll get that House Unity increased as well. It's going to cost 150 of our Heidi. Again, many of these interactions do cost piety, and they do keep this trait as well. So it's helpful to give that to your heir. We'll probably give it to our son, our, our second son as well. And I didn't notice that he already had two children who both have gotten the intelligence trait of their mother. He's intelligent while the other one is just quick. Yeah, this is our main line, so that's awesome that we've already brought in a positive trait into the main line. So we'll wait to do the other one for our uh, second son until we get a bit more of Heidi. Let's just save this up a little bit just in case we need it for something. So we'll go ahead and raise the troops up right here and get this war started. We will have our marshal in charge, of course. All right, second son is now married. Now we'll just go ahead here and uh, get these 800 something troops destroyed and then siege down that province. Now his ally did come into the war as expected and these two are no longer fighting. Our son Manu and Iza apparently are no longer having poor relations. So that's good. We had several events last episode about their problems together. All right, so with that war won, let's take a look and see how long the siege is going to take. 16 months, and you got to have a lot of troops. So hopefully attrition doesn't hit us too hard here. So let's take a look at how our troops did, our knights in particular. It looks like we actually killed one of their knights. This is our spy master. He was able to defeat him. He's an aspiring blade master. All right, excellent. So just making our knights better. A uh, faction was created against us. It's a hot ghost faction, though. We might face a popular rebellion. But yeah, with that battle, we have the maximum percentage we can get from battles. So really, we just need to win this siege here. And then the war will be over. And we had another son. Okay. 
So we'll name him after an ancestor. We'll name him Yazid. So that's our fourth son. We keep having sons, no no daughters. So we need to get that house unit up to make sure that uh, our son actually gets something, our, our heir. They keep on attacking us here, unfortunately. Uh, house unity has moved to harmonious. All right, excellent. So that's what we were waiting on. And so just to show you guys the different uh, bonuses that we're getting here from Friendly. The Cass's Belly cost is uh, uh, the only real penalty here. Of course, not being able to do the invasions. We already had that. Yeah, the rest are all, all benefits. And most importantly, our player heir will always inherit at least three quarters of all of our titles. So we just took a look at the succession situation now and you can see only our second and third son are going to inherit one of these titles here. So we do want to make sure we assign him to this one as soon as we can so that we don't lose titles that we'd prefer to keep. You know, the better ones. I also don't want to give a, a baby any territory. I think it would be better if we didn't. And our Chancellor this time was the one who executed one of their knights as he attempted to flee. We did capture somebody. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead and take a look uh, at our prisoner. See what we can do with him. Currently got him in house arrest. Uh, he's got good martial skill. He actually would be a much better knight than many of our current knights. So, you know, let's go ahead and recruit him. You can also demand his conversion. Probably should do that. He might not accept both of these, though. He would. Oh, he may still continue to practice it in secret. I don't know if they always had that notification there. That's interesting. I think they could always do that, continue to practice their religion in secret, but you didn't get a notification about it. Alright, so we still have enough troops to get this done. We're at three months, but they just keep on attacking us here. Reducing our troop numbers, but giving us uh, more opportunities to capture their knights. Maybe ransom them off. This is the mayor, so you could get some money out of him. And you really don't want to recruit him. So, yeah, let's go ahead and ransom him. Yeah, for the 30 gold. That'd be helpful. And then this character here, you could ransom him for 10 gold. And he's not a good knight or anything, so that's what we'll do. So that'll get us a total of 40 gold. Alright, excellent. So the war is being profitable, which is what we want to see. And our wife did get pregnant again. And we got a valuable prisoner. So, I mean, we finished the siege, and so we won already, but we also captured his son and heir and the main character. So we'll have him in a prison, figure out what we want to, to do with him. Might make sense to ransom him before we finish the conflict so you can get the, the full money out of him because he's considered, you know, count level. We'll take a look at that in a minute. We got events about our beloved wife. The servants have all been sent away and our bed has been decorated with roses. As Princess Sif uh, Sifri enters our chambers, she smiles shrewdly and joins me without hesitation. With the help of hands, mouths, and limbs, we reaffirm the devotion we swore before Allah, perhaps in a more carnal fashion than intended. Okay, so our attempt to seduce her was successful. So she'll become our lover. And it was largely successful, because remember it was only a 49% chance initially but it was largely successful because of how well we knew our wife the you know the different events we got the options we selected were the ones that were most fitting for her character now unfortunately our house unity just decreased though down to friendly well, that's interesting why would doing that I mean, maybe it wasn't that maybe it was something another character did like maybe something that happened with one of our sons but it's interesting that happened right when we got that event. It does look like the queen just lost over here. And that means she'll lose her throne, which is kind of a good thing because her son and heir, the eldest, is the emperor of the Byzantine Empire. So when he inherited, you know, this would all become part of the Byzantine Empire. So it's better that whoever this character is, let me just take a look. I assume it's it's much better that this character inherits yeah, it'd probably be better. He doesn't have any children of his own, but he's really young. I don't think he's set to... Yeah, he's going to inherit just one county here. So definitely a good thing for us that the Civil War seems to have gone against the Queen. Alright, so remember, if we ransom him now, we get the 50 gold. 
Yeah, he's not even worth like keeping, I think. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll get us the full 50. And then we can also ransom his uh, children and stuff. But you'd have to wait. So we might want to disband the troops. But if we're going to do that, we have to do it back home. He did accept that, but remember, we're still at the 100% because we, we uh, conquered his his capital and the only county he has. Um, so let's go ahead and now ransom off his son. Although he doesn't have any money, so he'd only get the nine gold on him. Okay. Is he worthy of being recruited? Not really. He's not all that impressive. He's got some intrigue. That's about it. Uh, what about this character here? We have some pretty cruddy knights. This guy actually might be better. And he does have a decent marshal as well. I uh, want we'll to take a look at our knights. Hmm. These are all his children. So he would have to, well, no, it'd still be hit this count here. He doesn't have any money anyways. Okay. This is what we'll do. Let's just go ahead and ransom off one of the children because they're only worth the, the 10 gold anyway, so you're getting the nine there. We'll keep him in prison. And then this character, I think we're going to recruit him as a knight. Let me just take a look and see how bad our worst knight is. Oh yeah, they're really bad. Level three here. So uh, yeah, I think he would definitely be a better option despite his, his low prowess. So let's go ahead and recruit him. Though we will demand his conversion, though actually we can't, he would not accept that. We'll just have to recruit him as is then. So let's get these accepted. We want that money, there we go, beautiful. And then we'll go ahead and end the war. Because he doesn't have any more money left anyways. So let's go ahead and force our demands here. And we did gain some legitimacy from that. So we need 287 more to get to ordained, which gives you a really nice renown bonus on top of everything else you're getting. So we definitely would like to get that. Uh, we are now over our holding limits. We can also disband our troops. But we're going to be giving this title here over to our son. Already arranged a marriage for him. So I will give him that county. Increase the penny with him. So he'll be quite pleased with us. That might have made him a powerful vassal. Let me just take a look. No, not as of right now. It might need to update as well, though. Again, I think we're going to keep everything as is. An event here, blind spot. So this is again regarding Manu and Issa's quarrels, despite the fact that we were told that they had made up. In fact, I believe we've already gotten this particular event. So we can increase the opinion of both of them, or take that money. So same option as before. We'll just increase the opinion. As a just character, we won't do that. I know we're not roleplaying, but as I said, we will roleplay a little bit in the series. And our son does want alliance, we're going to accept that. We need to get that house unit up. How far did it fall? We're at 158, so just need a few more points to get it back up to harmonious. Okay, one other thing we could do to try and increase it, this would increase it in fact, was to go ahead, well, we can only use this every so often. So we gotta wait a couple years. But yeah, that would increase it. But at that point, we should already be at the next level. Uh, we do need to appoint another task collector. Okay, because our son, when we put him in that position, he can no longer perform this role. We do have some just average characters here. Okay, yeah, we'll just do this guy here. Doesn't matter because we're not even using that. Uh, building construction cost has been reduced, right? We actually have some money that we could use. I think we're gonna go ahead and get the walls and towers since this is our capital. And uh, we'll station heavy cab here if we get any. It'll take us 20 months to get that constructed. Let me see if we have any notifications here. All right, so this is just telling us that our son expects a council seat, so he was moved to the powerful vassals. He's not actually very good at anything besides the the high learning. Again, it'd be really nice that if we if we could assign him here, it's not 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 an option. So we're just gonna leave him off the council for now. House unity is back up to harmonious. All right, excellent. So if we took a look. It should end up going, that one title should end up going to our other son, yeah. Okay, so as expected here. He does not have his childhood trait just yet. And we had another son, so he's probably not going to get any titles. 
Uh, yeah, we could have an, an Ahman. So again, just lots of suns. All of these with our primary spouse as well. All the suns we've had since we started the campaign anyways. Now we do need to increase our men in arms. So we could go with a light horseman. Those are pretty helpful for the uh, countering of the archers. Or you can increase the size of these heavy infantry a bit more. There's also camel riders which counter the light cab. Not quite as good in every way, but they're cheaper as well. I think we'd probably prefer the light horsemen. And then there's the bowmen to counter skirmishers, but I haven't seen a lot of skirmishers with our enemies. So I think the light horsemen would actually be better. Let me just take a look and see what Georgia currently has. So he's got bowmen, armored footmen. Okay, so it would be good to get the light horsemen, because yeah, I've seen a lot of bowmen. So I think this is the best option. So just trying to get those counter bonuses. And where would be the best location? Probably over here. Oh, we actually still have too many titles because this is a barony title, the temple title. So we need to grant this to somebody. I don't think we'll do a knight because if we were to hand out anything at this point, it'd probably be this title that we'd grant out to like one of our other sons. So you don't want to lose like a really good knight. Hey, somebody who just likes us. We could appoint this to him, the Mufti. I don't know what would happen, because I don't think he had any children, so we might just end up getting that right back, unless he gets married and has somebody. Yeah, you could just give it to somebody who's old. Kind of like hold it until one of our sons is old enough, then you might want to grant it to him. I don't know how much longer this character's going to live. Yeah, I guess we'll do him. We got an uncle over here that we could grant it to. He is from our house. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, you know what? Maybe that's what we'll do. We can just look at like everybody from our particular dynasty. And he's the only option. You know what? Let's grant it to him. And he's a guest, so that means he'll join our court. And he's alright. He'll become a knight. He's got some okay stats. So yeah, let's go ahead and grant him just that one barony. Make him our vassal. With the, the clan features, you know, the those house features, it is best to give the titles to those members of your house. So set the scale. Though my tax collector, Mashad, is of a capable enough sort, remember this is our court position, Avali Maimum has come to me with strong reservations otherwise. Mashad is not fearful of, all, of Allah, frequently sleeping through morning prayers and stealing morsels during Ramadan. All of us fear Allah's justice on his account. Maimum rearranges his shirt, clearly expecting me to fire Mashad for these transgressions. So if we do so, which this is our spy master, by the way. And, you know, he has those two titles here. Yeah, if we do that, we will, of course, fire him from being a tax collector, not a doctor. And we'll gain some piety. We'll lose some stress because we're just. Mashad will get the incapable tax collector. So a decrease of prestige. Uh, Maimum will be pleased with us. And these two might become rivals. Instead, we can say, I will keep your words in mind. Yeah, I guess we'll go with this option. Seems like the better one of the two. Does mean we will have a task collector position open. And he was our key task collector as well. So we're going to have to change Isa. Unfortunately, he's going to have to become the main one. And then we have to just put one of these average guys into this position. It does seem that the taxpayers have been split up between the two of these. Okay, so let me just take a look. So currently our half-brother and this guy are under the basic taxes. We could just assign all of them to the main guy, which I think is probably the most beneficial thing to do here. Because you can have up to 12, and he's the only one that has good aptitude, so you're going to get the most money and levies from him. So it seems 
that keeping them all under the best tax collectors is the best option for now. There's probably some penalties later on, you know, making one tax collector too powerful. Uh, we got a notification from our wife here. Is this uh, her attempting to win our heart? It is. Okay, so she's trying to romance us. I'm not opposed to our original spouse romancing us, so why not? You flatter me, my lady. She was uh, put aside for uh, a new younger wife. I feel bad for her. We did get a, a nice modifier here for five years, reducing Menonar's maintenance. So that'll earn us a little extra income now. Not spending as much, I should say. See if there's anything we need to be aware of here. We can ally with our uncle, so why not? And we got a diplomacy perk and a health boost. All right, so remember we got the finisher here. And so now we're gonna start moving down the next branch and get the children receive one to three extra skill points. That'll apply to our younger children here. Did our son just get it a second time? Yeah, because remember he got that bonus already when we selected it, but then we uh, reset our perks, and so he got to select it again. And so he just got another increase to his marshal. Okay. So you could exploit that, I suppose, if you're willing to take the stress by resetting your uh, traits over and over again. And then you could just keep on selecting this and giving the extra skills to your characters. That's interesting. And our second son got his learning increased as well. Because it is based off of what their education trait is. So how he has a, a learning of, of 20. And our third son also increased his learning. Okay, so that seems to be a little bit of an exploit where you could really ramp up. Again, you'd be taking a lot of stress, but uh, if you use events to just immediately remove that stress, then you could use that to really pump up the skills or one particular skill, uh, whatever their education skill is, for your, uh, your children. So usury against unity. So this is concerning Reza. He's Mamum's steward. He approaches us seemingly concerned. I have heard that Mamlin is sending money to courtiers in financial trouble, fending off their misfortune for his exorbitant interest rates. Everybody is saying that he is a user and needs to be held accountable. When I confront my accused uncle, he objects vehemently. This is a foul allegation. Some friends asked for monetary aid. That much is true, but I had no ill intent, nor have I asked for more than is right. Reza actually owes me money, hence his meddling in this matter. So we can imprison our uncle, who remember we just put into this position. And we're just going off of the word of Reza. This other character's steward. I don't even know this guy. This is our spy master steward. Ah, the spy master? I almost feel like he sent this guy just to bring him down. If you do that, your game Heidi as well as stress. Probably because, as a just character, we're just basing this off of one person's word while the other guy's denying it. And house unity will be decreased. We can instead force our uncle to share his ill-gotten gains. We'll lose opinion with them, but we'll get 50 gold. Or you say, it sounds like something to work out between yourselves. And that's basically, we're sticking with our uncle in our house. Increasing the house unity and losing opinion with Reza, and that's the option we're going to take. Yeah, we'll go with that one. We want to keep that house unity high. You know, we're supporting our uncle. And most importantly, that feels like the most just thing to do. These two are even closer to forming a rivalry. They really hate each other. Yeah, it feels like the most just thing to do because it's one guy's word against the other. He didn't bring any evidence or proof. Uh, social manipulation. So we've seen this event. And this is uh, with a different character this time. So looking at his traits, he's lazy, chaste, and deceitful. He's a dishonorable zealot. I mean, this is not going to be a easy option to pick. None of these are probably going to, to work on him. Because both of these are requiring him to care what people think. Well, this one requires him to do everything in his power to get the task done. Seems like a lazy person wouldn't do that. Yeah, we'll just mock him. Why not? I don't think any of the options there are going to work. So this is just the, the B-sided event. So we'll have an increased chance when we go hunting in this particular occasion, which is uh, Durbant. And you can just say you don't want to be notified about that, but yeah, we're fine to get in these so that we can, uh, you know, get the, the nice modifier. 
for hunting. This is in particular for a lynx. Do we want to go on a hunt? We haven't done that. We did we did the feast. We haven't done a hunt, so we don't have any stress. We have so many other things we need to spend money on. Like building in our capital. And it looks like this actually worked. Okay, so we got a weak hook on him. Again, not much that we can do with that weak hook. Could revoke his title, of course, if we wanted to. We don't even need to use the hook to do it, but you'll see it doesn't produce any tyranny. So yeah, let's just take this guy's title. He'll become a rival, but who cares? Is he still within our realm? No. I was going to say, we might just arrest this guy. So now we have that extra title, and we'll go and grant this out. I almost want to grant it to our uncle. How are his skills looking? Well, maybe you don't want him to be one of your most powerful vassals. Because then you have to give him some type of position. You could just give this to an old guy as well. Let's kind of base this off of age. Oh, do we still have our dynasty selected? We do. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at the old characters you got. And see who might want to, to grant this to. It's going to be somebody who doesn't have any children. I mean, this guy might end up keeping it. Yeah, there's a good chance that he could end up keeping that. And this is a, a city title as well, so we definitely don't want to hold on to that. So it doesn't really matter who we grant this to. I didn't realize this is a city title. You might just want somebody who's got, like, I don't know, good skills or something. Or maybe a good stewardship. I guess we'll do this character. As he works for our son. And this should allow us to make him a tax collector. Since he's now one of our vassals. Let me just take a look here. Well, he's not in here as an option. Oh, that's right. You can't hold any titles and be a tax collector. Never mind. And we got our wife pregnant again. Wow, we were getting busy. She's our lover, though, so that makes sense. And are we still constructing over here? Let me just take a look. Yeah, we're still working on that. Almost done. And we'll work on another building once we complete that. Unpleasant pleasantries. So when I set out, when I sent out invitations to a dance, I was looking forward to an evening of good company and frivolous fun. Instead, I find myself stuck in the dreadful conversation with my brother, uh, goes dumb. So this is our half brother. Do we not like him? Uh, I think the Lord has had enough. A woman interrupts. It is Sada, our wife. Can't you tell you're boring him? So I don't know if this is. Yeah, this is a romance event. Okay, remember we said it was okay if she she romances us. So we can say, indeed, I've had quite enough. Though it would insult our brother. Or we can say that we have time for everybody, and we're basically insulting her. Or instead say, I am not staying a moment longer than I have to, and lose some stress. Oh, we're not going to insult our brother. Let's go with this option. We don't have any stress anyways, but we do need to get something else constructing here. Or we could just upgrade this as well. That would be an option. It is 150 to upgrade it. Many of these buildings that we have in here would cost 150 as well. That's how I like the hunting grounds or the militia camps, which we wouldn't get either one of those. Okay, so yeah, let's just go ahead and upgrade. Upgrade this one then. It'll take us 20 months to complete. And our son has gotten his uh, trade, I guess, because he did get the groom to rule. And he's pensive. Maybe it's the childhood trait that controls that, rather than the education. So we're gonna have him do the stewardship. So he'll be better at that, and we haven't trained up a steward yet. And we did get our first legacy. All right, awesome. So I did wanna show you guys that there are some new legacies here. So the heroic bloodline and legitimacy, these came in the Legends of the Dead expansion. So these uh, make the legends better, just kind of scroll through these so you guys can see or make them easier to get or whatever. And then this one here is all surrounding legitimacy. This is going to increase your control growth and your popular opinion. Each heir starts with the last in line modifier, so legitimacy gain is plus 10%, so that's helpful for the first 10 years in power. This is increasing your opinion by 5 among your dynasty members. And also unlocks access, access to the espouse legitimacy intent, allowing you to build legitimacy during such activities 
as funerals, feasts, and grand weddings. At the Divine Mandates, vassals are less likely to join dissolution factions and claimant factions. And the last one allows you to select a fifth level education trait to make more common within your dynasty. So some good bonuses here. Not the most exciting of the legacies. And then this one here, Brilliance, I think this one was added in the legacy of Persia. And I don't know if it's available to everybody. It seems like it should only be available to clans. Well, maybe not. But I mean, a lot of these are, are surrounding the clans, like the tax jurisdictions, you know, the, the mechanics of them. You have that. And then the vizier counselor task is in there. Tax decree. This is for this particular man at arms. So it does seem like something that would only be available for uh, certain types of characters. But I don't know if that's the case or not. Maybe we eventually want to go down it, but for right now I don't know how helpful it is. We don't need an additional tax jurisdiction. Uh, getting the aptitude for these positions is nice, but again, only applies to your dynasty. I don't know if you didn't put them in those court positions. Some of them we don't even have access to, like the Master Assassin. Uh, the Lofty Ambitions, this is personal scheme power rather than hostile. You only get a bonus for hostile uh, scheme success chance against your own dynasty members. You do get steward, uh, stewardship lifestyle experience, that's nice. Uh, this is, is a good one though. Yeah, that's a pretty solid one. Uh, this one gives you a new tax decree. That one that uh, we saw was the only one that wasn't currently available to us. These guys are pretty helpful to have though. And then the last one unlocks the embellished capital decision. I like this one, a decision that enables you to improve your capital at the cost of a recently conquered county. That's pretty cool. But it's all the way at the bottom here, at the back here. And these two initial ones aren't that helpful for us. We kind of need anything we can get at the moment. So I don't know that we should go for this right now. Maybe go for that a little bit later. I kind of feel like the first one we should take which should be something that helps us immediately. So like grand weddings being cheaper or the ability to get the strong hook on a liege in the grand wedding, that, that's nice too, but obviously we don't have a liege. Usually it's a little bit more helpful when you do. Uh, the warfare one is probably the one you want to get. Doesn't mean you have to go all the way through here, but just the, the first one gives you that increased prowess in the night effectiveness. So that's pretty good. Uh, the law one might be pretty helpful, but again, that's more of like a long-term one because the initial bonus isn't that great. The popular opinion uh, plus five, that's not going to do much for you. Uh, the hunt and feast cost reduction, that's helpful. Saves you a lot of money in the long run. Uh, this would be great for, you know, reading traits in. So if we were to pick anything, I feel like this or this one, and I think we're going to do this one. Since we're trying to uh, use warfare for expanding our, our lands at the moment. Uh, how long before we can declare war in Georgia? Let me just take a look here. Well, actually, this is with Princess Martha, who lost her throne, so we should be able to declare war on the King of Georgia. However, it seems that he is currently allied to the Byzantine Emperor, despite, you know, overthrowing his mother. And she still holds quite a few titles over here, actually. She just lost the throne. So he's kind of a weak king, you would think, right? Well, maybe not. He controls the rest of the country. Okay, so the country's like split between these two. As far as his troop numbers go, they're not high. It's just his ally that's the problem. So we would have to pull in our own ally. So we need 750 prestige in addition to the prestige to declare the war in the first place. Could do a holy war for the duchy. This one would be the most beneficial. So you should clearly do that, but that's 260 piety, which we actually do have, but other Orthodox rulers may join the war, so definitely want to make sure that you get them in there, although I don't know who would join since the Byzantine Empire is already going to be joining that war as an ally. So yeah, you just got to make sure you get the 750 prestige, and then we can drastically increase our territory. So our wife wants to name our newborn son after us, Fairburs. So yeah, that's fine. We'll call him Fari. Fairy. We'll call him Fari, I guess. A lovely idea. And so, do we want to go on an activity at all? Or should we save our money 
It feels like it won't take us that long to get to the 750 prestige. I think we should just save our money. For the war, this could be a much larger conflict because of the fact that we're not only fighting Georgia, we're also fighting the Byzantine Empire. Although they are now currently dealing with their own large rebellion here. Okay, so they might not be able to help out that much. So this is a great time for us to start the war. And again, we got this thawing of relations between these two, but we've seen that that's not always true. Uh, we did construct, finish the construction of the, the bailey. So that's excellent. So we'd need 150 to construct most of these. But again, I think we might save our money for the conflict. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. Let's just wait to get to the 750 prestige. I mean, if we get a big stack of money, then, then we'll spend it. This is uh, the romance attempt by our wife, Sada. She calls us her noble stallion and is kneeling in the dust before us, right, uh, right hand above her heart. My only desire is to bring you honor and happiness. Right, tell me, how can I prove my love for you? So we can have her bring us a pelt. Which is nice once you're, uh, well, I guess this is just a straight modifier. I was thinking it was an actual pelt that you put up uh, in your, your throne room. That's not the case, though. You can get a jeweled necklace for prestige and attraction opinion. You can instead say, bring me something unusual, an exotic orchid, perhaps. This gives you increased learning and prestige. Or just end her romance attempt. I kind of want the flower, honestly. <laughs> That's kind of odd, asking for a flower, but uh, this is the most beneficial. So we're gonna go with that option. Oh, she refuses to give it to us. Wow, okay. Clearly she didn't want to romance us that much. Maybe she was just uh, uh, embarrassed by the fact that we asked for a flower of all things. That is, dudes can like flowers too, man. All right, so we can harden our court position if we want to. Our youngest son did get martial. All right, excellent, so that means he's got that rowdy trait. And we're gonna go ahead and let him do the martial education. So we're still training him up. He's only seven. So that means we do have to, if we want to train him as a warrior, we already have, well, let me take that back. I was gonna say we already have too many wards, uh, but I have not made Yazid our ward. He's doing the uh, stewardship education. Okay, so we'll pick somebody else to be his ward then. Somebody who is a good steward. Which, I mean, we're okay, but uh, certainly not the greatest. We could do our tax collector. We can also just have our wife do it. She's not fantastic and her learning's a bit low. Uh, honestly, this character's probably the best because he's got the... You know what? I think they're exactly the same because <laughs> the learning would be worth half the points as the stewardship. So they're exactly the same, these two. So you just grant it to who, whoever you want. I suppose we'll do this guy. Have him teach our, our son while we will educate Ahmed. And we're gonna try and make him into a, a warrior character, really good knight. So like with the previous CK series, if we've got like a period where not much is happening or just really uh, tedious events, for instance, when we travel, you guys know how I feel about those travel events, I hate them. It's the same events over and over and over again, we've all seen them and they're just not very exciting. Seeing them again for the 200th time, and so like whenever we have like periods where there's just not much happening or the real inconsequential events, I'm gonna go and cut those out. Just like I did with the previous episode. It seemed like a lot of people appreciated that. It's not gonna be a lot of stuff. It's mainly gonna be like the travel events, honestly. Uh, but yeah, we got an event here regarding the Sultan. And he's been of a real help in the past few days, aiding me in my efforts to strengthen the realm's ties with our neighbors. He just offered himself again to help me gain King Dimitri's trust. And that's the King of Georgia. It's so hard to find someone I can truly rely on these days. So if we say this, I shall remember your kindness. He becomes our friend, which is uh, definitely beneficial to us at the moment since we're not acting against him or his empire for a little while until we get strong enough. We don't really care about getting the respect of the King of Georgia since we're going to be attacking him soon, but uh, still getting the friendship I think is, is probably the best option. There's two other choices here as well, but I think we're going to go with this one. And so yeah, now we're friends with him. We also got a diplomacy work. Uh, educational taxation. Georgios appears to have been learning a great deal in his duties as tax collector, which is made quite clear as he accounts for his most recent endeavors. 
but I made good use of the accompany soldiers, who made sure we got every single coin they owed you, my lord. So because the taxes do benefit the both of us, this increases his uh, education trait. So he'll have even a higher marshal. Or he say, surely you could do better. He'll still gain the trait. He'll also get a critical stress level and he'll hate us. He'll increase his marshal by two or 90% chance of that. Could also form a rivalry with him. We'll just do this option. <laughs> Clearly a lot of negatives there. And we did look, lose that hook on that character. Wasn't really anything for us to do with it. Uh, this is a spouse event. So my lord, it has come to my attention that there is a rare opportunity to invest in Mugen. This is one of our counties here. She draws up the details for the business investment, and it does indeed look as if the deal could benefit Mugen greatly if successful. So we say it is a, worth, a risk worth taking. 75% chance that it does succeed and yet increased holding taxes and development growth. Could also fail though. You still get development growth, but you lose control growth. This uh, bonus is for 10 years or, or penalties for 10 years. Uh, leave the opportunity to the people of Mugen. Control will be increased and you lose 30 gold. Or this talk about local affairs is beneath me and we'll get prestige, which we very much need. All right, so where is this located? That's down here. We already have the full control there. I mean, it would be helpful to get increased taxes and development growth and 75% chance. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so it failed. I was going to say, 75% chance is pretty high. Uh, our culture has joined the high medieval air, so new innovations are available. Uh, also, we inherited something from... Was that our... Let me just take a look here. I'm guessing this is our uncle. Yeah, our uncle died, so that's what we expected. We just wanted to hold on to it for a little while. I expected it to be a little longer than it was. Uh, but yeah, he didn't, he didn't survive that long, unfortunately. Who's granted to an old guy again? Somebody we're not using. Probably this guy here. And we don't see us using him. He's not, not that great. He's okay. Uh, we do have a perk. So we can get Heart of the Family, Close Family Opinion, or the Befriend. Allows you to use that Befriend scheme and unlocks a challenge to board game interaction, allowing you to play friendly games with other characters. Yeah, I guess we'll get this one here. Move down this branch first, and then we'll come over here and get these ones. So another one of these events here with your children. There's events like these that we might like skip, since you know that you get so many of them. Uh, but yeah, in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and get that piety. And you know what? I forgot that we're gonna do the praising of our second son, who is now gout-ridden. He has had a daughter. That's unfortunate. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and uh, talk about his, his virtues here to increase house unity. And where are we at on house unity? We're very high now. Okay, so hopefully shouldn't be at any risk of going back down to friendly. Uh, we still have more piety even after doing that, so we could take one of these two options. These ones uh, here require a little bit more of the piety. Uh, this one's the encourage house to improve the economy. And also do the placate vassals. The modifiers here are based on how many landed house members you have, which we have four, and it increases the vassal opinion by one for each one, so you'll get uh, plus four vassal opinion. I think that applies to all vassals, not just the, the house members. And then you also get the Powerful Vassal Counselor Tax Contribution. So that's a uh, 4% for taxes. And then the Personal Scheme Success Chances, plus 8%. So it's it's more beneficial with the, the more members of your house that have landed titles. Okay, so you might want to wait to take that because you can't take it very often, uh, very often, only every 20 years. So maybe once we've given titles to all of our sons, so I don't know if we'll live through that. We're currently 48 at the moment, so we should still live much longer. And then we looked at this decision here, educate the youth. And this one would be pretty good for a lifestyle experience bonus. And then there's uh, the promote development as well. This one is also based on the members of the, uh, the house that are landed. So construction costs is reduced and development growth is increased. So these ones, which are more expensive when it comes to the piety, 
are really ones that you want to take when you have a lot of land members of your house. So let's go over this one here. Now, zero young men would benefit from this decision, but we would still get this bonus. So we're gonna go for it to increase our monthly lifestyle experience points. That'd be helpful so we can move through our perk tree a little bit faster. Almost have the prestige that we need. We're not gonna need this much money for the war, so we can go ahead and get something else constructing. Can improve the small harbor pretty expensive though and your bonuses just aren't as good so that's why it's often better to go ahead and construct a new building. I'm tempted to do the hospices for the plague resistance and the Heidi and of course the money's nice as well and you give some bonus to your men in arms and get some more legitimacy later as well once you get those uh, later upgrades. Well the other option would be the stables really focus on the the cab units once you get a cab unit assigned here Give you more bonuses there. You also get some more levies and uh, grand tournaments are cheaper or certain parts of the grand tournaments are cheaper. And so that's nice. And then you also get an army movement speed increase of plus 1% and a travel speed of plus 1%. And those increase quite a bit as you level it up. So those will be the two options. Plague resistance is nice since it's at our capital. And so it's the place where it makes the most sense to get that. I think we're gonna do this one, the stables. So let's go and get that constructed. I think there's a duchy building here that helps you with that. Let me just take a look. There is this new one as well, the, the burial site. This is gonna get you that piety, legitimacy, and the legend spread chance. All kinds of nice bonuses. And it does give you a play resistance of plus 20 across the entire duchy. So that would be pretty helpful to get. Just see if there's any other bonuses. Yeah, that seems to be the, or any new ones, I mean. That seems to be the only one I'm seeing here. It's good to always get this one. It's not the, what I would typically get, but that'd be an option if we just want some plague resistance. All right, so another lovely event here with our wife trying to romance us. I can scarce remember what my life was like before Sada declared her love for me. I am flattered, but also overwhelmed by her attentions. I find myself longing for some peace and quiet. Yet I cannot help but worry, would I be throwing away my only prospect of true love? That cannot be right, can it? So she can become our soulmate, or we can say she deserves a kiss at least for her devotion, or this infatuation ends today. Well, one of the events that when we had that, that little period where it wasn't much happening, one of the events that fired lost me prestige for this romance event chain. So I feel like she's not our soulmate. Now we did have our two eldest children with her. I just don't think our character is as close with her as he is with his new spouse here. Although it does look like she needs a little something extra to deal with the stress of her everyday life here. I understand that. Anyways, I feel like we're a little bit closer with her. We've had these four children with her. I think she should be our soulmate. You know, we got her as a lover and we were thinking about romancing her and then we didn't, we didn't do that yet. So we're just gonna do this option here. She'll not become our soulmate, but you know, we give her something for her devotion. All right, so almost got the prestige up here, guys. Okay, right, so this is an event we've seen many times. So I'm not gonna read through that one. Yeah, once we get to the, oh no, it's 750. I don't know, I was thinking 650. Somebody's still trying to kill us over here and uh, we're gonna imprison him again, the way we did last time and probably recruit him again. Cause this guy is, is solid. Yeah, not bad at all. Holy warrior. I mean, we could recruit him through there, but too late, already up in this up. So that's what we're gonna do. Get him recruited to get another solid knight. Yeah, we need to get that prestige up to 750. Sun learned Arabic. That's our second son. Yeah, we gotta call him in because we would not be able to take the Byzantines on our own. I think we could take the King of Georgia on our own though. Oh, he's also dealing with, uh... okay, he's helping the Byzantine Emperor with those conflicts. He might not even be there. Yeah, this is a really good time with this rebellion here for us to do this war. Uh, so this is the trait for Arslan, and remember he's doing the diplomacy education. 
And he got the diligent trait, which is solid. I think we'll just let him keep that. That's a good one to have. And then we don't take any additional stress either. So when this is done, we can go ahead and get something else constructing because we do have the money. And we're not starting to war yet until we get to that 750. Uh, seems like our youngest son also got the, the rowdy trait. Okay, so maybe have him do the intrigue education. We just need to find somebody to educate him. Probably our spy master. I think he'd be our, our best option. Although it doesn't look like it's even a choice here. Does he already have his own sons that he's he's raising? That's what I'm assuming. No, he doesn't. Maybe we have to do it through here then. Maybe that option only lets you pick people in your court. Yeah, that's probably what it was. So we need to find which son this is. Is it this one here? Yeah, it's this one here. We're gonna have him educate him and that also boosts the opinion with our spy master, though does decrease house unity. That's interesting. House unity has been integrated throughout the game. A lot of things affect it. And so I'm glad that they really integrated that into, into the game. Alright, so he has arrived safely and we have constructed the small stables. So we could save up to get the duchy building. Can also just get one of these upgraded since it's a lot cheaper. Gets you some more levies, increases your army movement speed. I don't want to spend the 250 right now though, so we'll have to wait. I want to make sure we got a good good war treasury going. Just keep getting the same event over and over again. So let's keep scolding them and getting the opinion increase, but yeah, you can get a lot of money. That's something we've seen before, and here we've seen this one too. That you get like a new expansion that comes out, and then the events just, you see the same event over and over again, and it's preferred over other events that are in the game. Like, yeah, we've already seen this one twice now. So, one of the, my complaints about CK the repetition of events. So it seems that the Sultan, our friend, has asked us to promote his legend. And so I'm not sure what his legend is. It's of his Hunnic heritage. And he'll pay us 225 gold to do it. And I've heard people report that when you do this yourself, when you uh, hire a, a person to promote your legend, a promoter, that doesn't seem to work. The AI doesn't seem to do it. It doesn't seem to have any effect. But are we willing to promote this guy's legend here? Who's a future enemy? And he's our friend at the moment. I mean, it's really probably going to be our you know, later members of our dynasty that are taking down the Seljuks. Especially since they do seem quite stable. We'll have to see what happens when he dies, of course. But yeah, I think we'll do it for the 225. So we'll accept that. And that will allow us to go ahead and get the duchy building. Might as well while we have all this money. You don't often sit on 500 when you're this small. And so I almost want to get the burial site just because it's it's the new one. And it does have some really good bonuses with the piety, the legitimacy, the plague resistance. So I think we're going to get this in our capital even though I, cannot, I don't think it's probably better than the options that you have available like the military academies is great. And there's a lot of really good bonuses in here, guys. But yeah, is it better than all these? No. Absolutely not. I don't think so, anyway. We're going to do it just because this is what the, uh, the DLC is focused on. And it's still helpful. It's got some really nice bonuses. Again, the play resistance, legitimacy, legend spread, chance, piety, core grandeur. I mean, it's all good stuff. It's just not as good as the other ones that you could get. But we'll do that since we didn't do the hospice. We haven't done any of the new buildings in our capital. So again, having some problems with tax collectors. So I see a lot of these events here. I cannot work like this. My tax collector, Georgios, exclaims, frustrated and dejected. Every Sharia court of the Shadam is a wretched hive of incompetence, hammering all my efforts. Good tax farming means competent, I don't know what word that is, Kadis, uh, to keep the local magnates in check, to make your rule just in the eyes of the God and your claim to the bulk of the taxes righteous. You must give me funds to employ more and better people for the courts and the authority to fire the corrupt old Cotties. So this is 110 gold that we don't have. 
It would increase the pending with the tax collector, and he would get bonuses. But it might increase his aptitude. He's not even our main guy, though, is he? I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, same, yeah he's not. We have currently have Isa. Now, I'd like to replace him for sure, but yeah, it's just interesting that you get these events with these tax collectors that you don't even, you're not even using. You're supposed to care what's going on with them. Or you say, do I seem made of money? He'll become resentful and we'll take some stress because we're patient. We're going to go with that option. we got to build up a, uh, a war chest for this upcoming conflict. Our prestige is almost to the 750. Uh, we did lose 50 piety because our Mufti is poor learning skill. So that's unfortunate. But yeah, we almost have the prestige up. I know our army's not that large and that expensive. Uh, let me just take a look at that. First, let's go ahead and get this perk. This is Bound by Blood. Personal scheme success chance 25% against family members. And we're able to use the Rescue House Members CB or the Unify the House CB. We're just getting that. So eventually we can get down and get the, the Friendly Council. All right, so let's go and take a look at the, the Legends here. So this Legend isn't helping us or giving us any benefits. Now here's the the chronicle, and so this is kind of interesting aspect. I'm looking forward to being able to do it ourselves. I don't know that our character will get the fame high enough, though. Honestly, currently our fame is only at distinguished. So I'm expecting this is something we'll end up doing, playing around with the legend system. I mean, with uh, one of our heirs rather than our our current character. And we did increase our marshal by one. All right, excellent. That's something to do with our, our son there. So yeah, lots of these events from the wards and wardens. We're not gonna do the, the Prince of Fashion one here. We'll just do uh, the one that gets us more prestige. So we now have the prestige to declare war on Georgia, but it does seem that the war here is over. So that's unfortunate. I mean, they'll still be kind of weakened from the war, as you can see, but I mean, honestly, it would have been better to do that when, uh, to do our war when they're at war. But I wanted to make sure we could bring in our ally here. Uh, we don't want to fight a Byzantine Emperor without them. But yeah, they're still weak from it. And so we can kind of take advantage of this. He does have an heir now as well, his daughter here. But yeah, we'll go ahead and invade and take over this duchy here with the assistance of our ally. Let me see if he's currently involved in any conflicts. He's not. We're his only ally. I never thought we'd become so close, by the way. You know, becoming friends and allies like this. He is currently 52, so just a little bit older than our own character. So we'll have to see, of course, what happens when the next generation takes over. That'll be interesting. But unfortunately, that is where we're going to end the episode. We'll pick up the beginning of next episode with this conflict. That's going to be the first thing we'll do, is we'll declare war on Georgia. So I hope you guys did enjoy this one. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on that next one, and thanks for watching.